Welcome back everyone, my name is Echo and I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Today's Minecraft video, we're back on Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version. This is the version 1.17.0. It is now available for iOS, Android, Windows 10, Xbox, Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 and Minecraft Java Edition. So today is a very good day because in this video we have the official release of Minecraft 1.17 Caves and Cliffs Update Part 1. Now can we try and smash 5,000 likes on today's video? I've kept you all updated since day one, every single beta and every single snapshot. There's more than 5,000 of you that watch these videos so if you could leave a like, I do really appreciate it. Before we start getting any questions about candles, here is the official confirmation from Jay Wells, Mega Spud, the community manager. Give him a follow. He said, candles will be coming to Minecraft Bedrock soon. We know that this is a highly anticipated feature. So thanks for your patience, everyone. So as we're making this video, candles is not available in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. It's only available for Minecraft Java Edition. So let's get into this because a lot of things have changed. The first thing that you probably noticed, background. We have a different panoramic background available, of course, for all the Bedrock versions. It features the dripstone, deep slate, copper, amethyst geodes, and so much more. Another change that we have is this down here is now for your realm invites. It was previously up here. It was kind of hard sometimes to notice. So if your friends have a realm, they've invited you, tap on this, and then you can see which realm you want to join. Another change you will notice if you go into your settings, the color system's a lot better. It's a lot brighter. It's a lot more easy to understand. The background here is a lot more different. So is this and, and so is this. So we do have some slight changes to the UI and another change you probably noticed is you do no longer get flashbanged by that white screen when you load up Minecraft. It's kind of like a dark mode screen. So much better. One more thing that we've recently noticed. Go to play. Go to servers. Coming soon. There is going to be a new official featured server coming to Minecraft. Not quite sure what it's going to be, but always excited to see new competition available. So yeah, new server is coming. So I wasn't going to do this, but I've decided to go over all the features in 1.17 one more time. I've gone over all of these in separate betas, but it's a good day. It's a day of celebration. It's a day of adventuring. I can also see like the slight bit of mountains going on over there. Uh, we'll find... Hey, you. We'll find like... Oh, hey, I'm sorry. We'll find goats and stuff over there. Uh, but yeah, today is a very good day. Surprise, surprise. Three new achievements added to the game. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed and that is because Minecraft Java had 11 new advancements and Minecraft Bedrock only has three achievements. Nonetheless, go to your settings and profile and then achievements and you'll no longer be at 100%. Uh, It'll probably say something like 98% unless you're crazy and managed to finish them already. Number one, the healing power of friendship. Team up with an axolotl and win a fight. The next one, whatever floats your goat, get in a boat and float with a goat. I love that one so much. And we have wax on, wax off, apply and remove wax from all the copper blocks. 30 gamer score, 20 gamer score and 30 gamer score. I would love to have seen a couple more though. So a little bit disappointed there. One of the most exciting features, everybody, we now have axolotls in Minecraft. They come in bucket form and also spawn egg form as well. Now axolotls will spawn in underground water. Now they love tropical fish. So if we have ourselves an axolotl from a spawn egg, and from a bucket there, you show them the tropical fish, they're going to go crazy. They love them. That's how you breed them. There's a couple of different colors and they will attack glow squids. They will attack fish. This guy, look at them. They're incredibly deadly. Now, if you do hit an axolotl and it takes damage, they will play dead. This is so that they can regen and get ready to attack. So be very careful with these. Now, one thing I also want to mention is if we get ourselves a splash water bottle, splash water bottles do work on these. So if you're taking them from one location to another, you don't have a bucket, you can use splash water uh, potions and it will give them a small amount of what I'm going to say is stopping them from drying out. They will dry out over a period of time. So 
make sure you protect these. They're actually an endangered species. Welcome the goat. So, goats. Now, goats can actually be milked just using an ordinary bucket. They can be milked the same way as a cow. Goats love to yeet things. They love to yeet players. They love to yeet mobs. And um, please, please do not go and yeet these guys. No, 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 no. I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put you on a leash because the last thing I want is you to kill my my much needed villagers and, and wandering traders. There's a bug here though. Look at the, why, like it goes, why is the leash in my eye? <laughs> yeah, so that's still not been fixed. Anyway, in terms of goats, for now, goats will spawn in extreme hills. That will change in part two. Now, goats will actively avoid powdered snow. Powdered snow is new. You can sink in powdered snow. You have a freeze animation. It will freeze mobs. It will freeze players. It will freeze everything apart from mobs that are already frozen and freezing. Anyway, if we put ourselves a goat here and I hold this, they will pathfind across the grass. They will not cross over. We go and stand over here. They will not cross. No, come on, come on. Come on, is he coming in? There you go. They will not cross over powdered snow. They don't like it. The third and final mob introduced in part one is the glow squid. Now, the glow squid will spawn inside dark spaces, it says. So, I found these. You know in the waterfalls that you see in ravines? I found them there. The glow squid actually won uh, a minecon vote. The axolotl will attack the glow squids. Now, glow squids, uh, I know I'll laugh and joke about them, but they're, they're a pretty half-decent introduction to the game in terms of the features it has available. The glow squid originated in Minecraft Earth, and it's made its way over here. It kind of has a couple of, like, sparkling sounds. The only downside is it doesn't quite glow. It's meant to glow. Anyway, glow squids are aquatic creatures that spawn in underground water. When killed... Glow Squid drops Glow Ink Sack. The Glow Ink Sack can be used to craft glowing item frames. So that goes inside of there, that goes inside of there, and out comes a glowing item frame. This, plus your map wall at nighttime, looks absolutely fantastic, so give it a go. Something else to remember with the Glow Squid and the Glow Ink is it can be used to make glowing signs. So, let's start off from the beginning. We'll just put this as regular black. This is your regular sign right there. Grab yourself a color, for example, yellow. It looks kind of meh, dull, boring. Well, add the glow to it and it's brighter. However, it looks like Minecraft Bedrock has the older style of glowing. Meanwhile, on Java Edition, it's a lot bolder and more uh, standing out, should we say. So I imagine that is gonna change. Although you still do have glowing signs I still think it's a pretty cool feature, um, but this this is definitely going to change at some point in the near future. But yeah, Glow Squid, not too bad. That's the third and final mob introduced. Continuing on, here we have Glow Lichen. Well, it's Glow Lichen. So this spawns naturally inside mine shafts, and it basically is bright, is probably the best way to say. Oh yeah, it spawns in caves as well. It's just another light source. So I don't know if you're like me and really, really hate having to place down torches. This is just another alternative instead of having to do that. Now, we have amethyst geodes added to world generation. Amethyst geodes consist of smooth basalt, new block introduced as the outer layer. The inner layer is the calcite. We also have inside of there the amethyst block. We have the budding amethyst and this will grow the actual uh, shards that you're gonna need. The shards come in small medium and large, but you typically need the amethyst cluster. This is how you get shards. But let me show you what a geode looks like. This is what an amethyst geode looks like. Now these can spawn all over your world. They can spawn underground, they can spawn sometimes above ground, they can spawn in oceans, but you're typically gonna notice these when you're just playing Minecraft and doing some mining and stuff like that. So again, here's all the items. My recommendation when you find one of these, like I said in a previous video, is write down your coordinates. Because as long as you have these, which are this one, which is the budding, you can get unlimited shards. It takes quite some time to grow, but these will grow literally on every single side of the geode. And yes, they literally grow naturally. So unlimited shards. This thing being the amethyst cluster can be fortuned. And again, the outcome will be a shard. The shard can then be crafted using copper, which I'll get into that a little bit more in today's video. But using this and one shard, the outcome will be the spyglass. Yep, 
Bedrock players, Optifine has entered chat. This is a huge feature and there is a bunch of resource packs out there that literally get rid of the outline as well, which basically makes it like Optifine. This is a huge thing for Minecraft Bedrock. So iOS, Android, Windows, and Xbox, Switch, PlayStation 4, you can check it out. And if I remember correctly, there is a setting somewhere that lets you change how fast it moves. Found it. Whether you're playing on keyboard or mouse, controller or touch, you're looking for this, spyglass damping. So I think if you go higher, so I'm on keyboard and mouse, if I go higher, it literally makes the zoom like really, 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 really slow. But if I change it back and go all the way to zero, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> probably best to keep it to default, but I mean, you can mess around with it as much as you want. Tinted glass. I always forget about this feature because it's not talked about enough. Tinted glass is absolutely fantastic. If we got a game mode survi survival, unlike regular glass, when you break this, you get the item back. Now, tinted glass, though visually transparent, light does not pass through this. So light cannot pass through this block at all. And if we go back to game mode creative here, put ourselves in like a little bit of a thing here. Doesn't let it doesn't let light in here, so I, I can see some really cool things being crafted and created with this. Maybe like mob farms or something because you can see in, but it still has the same effect. If you would like to craft it, it's 16 or anything should I say in terms of numbers. Glass in the middle and the outside is the shards, and that's how you get yourself your tinted glass. We have a new ore introduced to Minecraft. Welcome to Copper Ore. This comes in two forms, regular color stone, and this one being deep slate copper ore. This will generate at the lower depths, and yes, it does naturally generate. Now, I wanna talk about this a little bit more because Minecraft um, have made like mining so much better. If we go back to survival here, when you break this, you don't get the block itself. You now get this, which is raw copper. Now, using fortune increases your chances. You know the way you mine diamonds and coal? You get more bang for your book. That's the exact same with the likes of your copper. But it's not just copper, it's the same for. It's also the same for iron now. Iron is just so awesome. You can get lots of it. Again, fortune makes a big difference. We had eight and now we've got 12 of them. Same with gold. We've got eight of these here. And we managed to get ourselves 13. So this is to save inventory space and something that makes it even better is if you have nine pieces So we'll use this one for example. You can craft something called block of raw gold now You can get block of raw gold. You can get block of raw Iron and you can get block of raw copper These can also be converted back. So if we put the one inside there it goes back to these this inside there back to these and this inside there goes to raw copper this to me is my favorite feature introduced and it's going to make inventory space so much cleaner. Well done Minecraft. So I'm not going to go through every single block, but copper can be crafted into many different blocks. And copper now has an oxidation stage, which means the longer you leave it outside in the rain and the sun, it then has different effects. This is literally adding some kind of historic feature to Minecraft now it literally just keeps going and going so I've gone over these many many times absolutely love this and it looks like they actually fixed no nope, no nope, they didn't I'm sorry to disappoint they did fix the texture how have they not managed to fix this texture for final release sorry if you have OCD like me this really sucks Staying on the subject of copper, if you want to craft yourself a lightning rod, this thing can stop houses and stop being burnt down. But like I've always mentioned, I've never once had my house burnt down in Minecraft, um, but this stops it. Just a couple more details about the lightning rod. All lightning strikes that happen within a radius of 64 blocks from a lightning rod will strike the lightning rod. A lightning rod struck by lightning will emit a full redstone signal for eight game ticks. So if you wanted to go and build a house out of wool now, you could totally go and do that. So yeah, that's a change as I get an invite. New block. Welcome deep slate. Deep slate is generated in blobs below y equals 16. That'll change in the, in the future. Mining it with a pickaxe will drop cobbled deep slate, which can be smelted back into deep slate. Now it says when ore is generated in the same place as deep slate, 
deep slate variants of that ore are now generated instead. So you will find, like I said over there, the copper deep slate variations. And just to show you as an example, I actually found some here, naturally generated. No lie, I actually found this when digging down. So we've got the cop, uh, the the iron variation, and this stuff's like in a in a in a big area as well. So if you're looking for deep slate, it is quite common. You're just gonna have to go down to typically towards diamond level, and and you'll start finding this. So yeah, I really like this feature, and it just makes cave generation now even cooler. Just like copper, this also comes in many different variations and blocks. Using the stone cutter, you'll figure it out in no time. You have regular blocks, even designed blocks. You have stairs, you have walls, you have slabs, the whole shebang. So yeah, new block introduced to the game. Hello, Deep Slate. You've probably seen this before. This is Toph. Toph originally was linked to Amethyst Geodes. They decided to change it and went with Smooth Basalt. That's another block that will naturally generate in and around towards Deep Slate. So yeah, pretty cool feature. The next one, this is a Mason Villager, right? Mason Villagers will now give you the chance to buy this, which is the Dripstone Block. So this can actually be bought by this guy as well. Staying on the same subject of Villagers and Wandering Losers, I mentioned this not long ago, but this guy is actually slightly useful now. The Wandering Loser, aka Trader, can actually sell you Rooted Dirt. They can sell you the small Drip Leaf. Then you can bow meal it and get a big Drip Leaf. They can sell you... Uh, the moss block, which has got a lot of uses, and we'll get into that in just a second. And they can sell you the pointed dripstone. So a large proportion of these features are also coming from villagers. So your mason village is going to get useful. And keep an eye on these guys. They spawn quite frequently, and they're going to give you a couple of decent things. The next thing is, once you've spent your, your, your hard-end emeralds from farming villagers um, on these wandering traders, you'll get this, the moss block. Now the moss block when bone milled can produce this, which is a carpet, just decorative item. However, it can also produce this, which is the flowering azalea, and this, which is just regular azalea. These, when bone milled, grow the azalea trees, which is how you get the leaves for these, right? So, although I don't know why that's going to that one, that should not happen. That should not give me flowering azalea. That looks like a bug. Because that's not flowering azalea technically. I mean, it's this one, right? Hmm. Have we just found a bug? Possibly. Anyway, if you break these, you can get yourself rooted dirt. It's another way to get rooted dirt if you're not trading it. Now, if you use a hoe on the rooted dirt, you can get the roots. And the roots are just another decorative item. I think we just found a bug. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to test this after the video. Regardless, continuing on, rooted dirt, right? If you grab bow meal and bow meal the rooted dirt, you can also get the hanging roots that way as well. But that was quite strange because this right here should not produce the flowering azalea, which is that one. Unless I'm missing something. Hmm. That's really discombobulated me. These are glowberries. Now, if you bone meal the vines, you get glowberries. And these are, e well, they can be eaten for a start. Um, they don't give you like the, they should give you like the glowing outline. I thought that could be really, really cool. Really helpful if you're in a cave. Maybe it's like a glowing outline for like five seconds. So it can help you find your friends. Um, but like these can be harvested as well. And these can be found in mineshaft. So glowberries can be planted on the bottom of most solid blocks to grow cave vines. They can be eaten and are, nutrition, are, are as nutritious as berries. Use them to lure and breed foxes. So, yep, another way to breed your foxes. So this is the spore blossom. Currently, spore blossoms are only available in creative, and that's this. It's a decorative item. Honestly, the spore goes absolutely everywhere. It's a lush cave biome block. So a little bit disappointed they didn't add them to the wandering trader as well. So we have changes and we have known issues. Let's go to the change log and let's check this out. But yo, if you are still here now, let me know in the comment section if you're still watching. I appreciate you. Thank you. Changes. Improved visibility when swimming in underwater caves. They've also changed how oceans look. It's kind of matching Java. A new beautiful main menu panorama updated the appearance of the initial loading screen. Compass and clock item textures have been updated. Forgot to show you that, so I apologize. It says, all textures have been updated to better differ differ differentiate in more ways than just color. 
and we've got added distinct damage sounds for burning, freezing, and drowning. Bone meal now makes a sound when used, drowns, now drop copper ingots instead of gold ingots. I have gone over all of these in separate betas and kind of just forgot today. Quite important, known issues. The update size of iOS is over 200 megabyte, which exceeds the limit of downloads over cellular data. The update can be downloaded downloaded over Wi-Fi connection, so remember that when you're on iOS. Players sometimes do not receive game invitation on Android devices. Current active bug. Featured servers cannot be joined by players on Nintendo Switch. We hope this will be resolved soon. That really sucks. I think that's been an issue for a little bit of time. It says here, players on Windows 10 updating to 1.17.0 with certain graphics hardware may experience a black screen on launch. This only affects players who had changed the anti-aliasing setting from default and can be rectified by resetting the settings. Please see and then bug report for more information. Important news regarding Minecraft on Android and Fire TV. There's a little bit more information there. And we then get into bug fixes and overall fixes to do with performance, general gameplay mobs. There has been a lot of changes. And this is a huge update to Minecraft. So full credit goes to developers. Feel free to read this in more information, even changes to realms, UI, commands, you name it. There's been a lot of fixes. Last thing, technical updates. If you're into the technical stages and add-on packs, you can download them from the official change log, which is in the description. There has been more technical update changes. So again, I recommend going to check the change log if you're into that kind of stuff. But add-on creators, mod makers, it's typically for you. So just to make sure I cover these features, the clock texture and the compass texture has been changed. Bone meal has a new sound. Sounds kind of squishy. And drowns now have the option of dropping copper. It's not that common, honestly. I've tried so many times. I've got looting three on as well, so you'd think that it would give you a better chance. But honestly, it's not happening. But if you've got like a, a drown farm, or a zombie, there you go. If you've got a zombie farm, you can turn them into drowns, and then you can get copper this way as well. Although it's pretty easy to find. I reckon there's only like 5% still watching in today's video, so if you did make it to the end of the video, I do really appreciate it. I've spent so long over the past couple of months keeping you all updated, and I hope I've done a pretty good job. So all I ask for you to do is to leave a like. Have a great day, enjoy the update. I'm gonna be live streaming a brand new series on Facebook gaming, so it's just fb.gg forward slash echo x soldier links are down below have a wonderful day enjoy the update and until next time just stay beautiful goodbye